very good evening to all of you on behalf of auditing and insurance standard board of institute of chartered accountant of india i welcome you all in today's webinar uh, on the theme key consideration in while auditing the telecom sector as you all are aware uh, wsb has organized various uh, uh, technical uh, uh, webinars on various industry based webinars like we have already covered healthcare industry we have covered a non profit organization we have covered uh, education sector we have covered power sector we have covered other sectors also so this sector is also very important so that is why <laughs> we have decided to uh, uh, organize this uh, webinar today on telecom sector and in order to uh, tackle this uh, technical session and various key considerations we are having with us uh, sir nilesh khemka ji so on behalf of uh, wsp of ici i extend my warm welcome to you uh, nilesh ji on this thank uh, you sir organized by ws i also welcome all the participants of today's webinar so before we formally start uh, i would like to share the brief profile of today's learned speaker sir nilesh khemka ji Nilesh is having extensive experience in accounting and auditing across different industries. He has a strong technical knowledge and practical experience of IFS and NDS standards relating to the financial reporting advisory services with respect to gap conversion, revenue recognition, accounting due diligence, advising on technical accounting, change accounting matters, and implementation of IFRS and NDS. He is extensively involved. for reviewing the ifrs diagnostic report ifrs financial statements and technical memos for 300 plus audit clients of eny saudi and transition to the ifrs he has been involved in resolving complex accounting issues with respect to financial instruments revenue recognition consolidation lease accounting business combination etc he has performed as a team lead on various gap conversion and financial reporting engagements including reviewing fctr intercompany reconciliation defer tax interim reporting liaising with auditors coordination with various teams is a key client includes oil and natural gas corporation oil india limited punjab national bank mangalore refinery and petrochemical grofers and uh, dedicated freight corridor corporation etc is relating to the ipo advisory including restatement of financial statements for guidelines issued and coordination with the merchant bankers assisting management to prepare draft red herring prospectus he has worked with fp and a team for preparation of future projects next 5 years for the company and he is uh, in its uh, new investment areas for the purpose of ipo filing as far as his uh, skills are concerned he is uh, proficient in financial reporting consolidating review recognition business combination share based payments designing of policy framework sops and narratives gap conversion ifrs ndas audit readiness projects and various financial planning forecasting and budgeting he has delivered various lectures on ifrs ndas indian gap as well as various auditing standards on various platforms organized by or, auditing and assurance standard board as well as other platforms by the institute of chartered accountant of india he has also delivered various physical lectures as well as the webinars and virtual cp meetings on various platforms of institute of chartered accountant of india so without wasting much more time i request nilesh ji to please enlighten all of us on various key consideration while auditing the telecom sector over to nilesh ji please thank you anil ji for giving me another chance to share my views on key considerations in audit and welcome all the participants so let me just share my screen yeah so is my screen visible anil ji yes yes so uh, the topic for today is key consideration while we audit telecom sector so it is important to first understand what is telecom sector what it comprised of how telecom sector in india has behaved or moved in in a decade what are the changes uh, we have witnessed uh, in telecom sector in india there are some of the key terms which uh, we will uh, obviously discuss as we progress uh, in today's discussion uh, like uh, average revenue per user arpu which is the significant measure or i would say uh, the measure which uh, 
uh, tells us how profitable the company is uh, any impairment indicators are there or not how a particular company is doing in comparison to its peers globally right then uh, second is the churn rate one is the subscriber acquisition cost uh, the minutes of usage these are some of the terms which uh, telecom companies in india use uh, or maybe we can say these are some of the kpis uh, which are being used by telecom companies in india as far as telecom sector is concerned uh, there are some uh, uh, three four type of uh, companies which majorly operate uh, within a telecom sector uh, like uh, infrastructure companies uh, which uh, sets up the infrastructure or maybe towers which caters to the need or the requirement of network provider companies of transmitting the uh, network from uh, one place to another place they facilitate uh, network provider companies uh, to or they or they enable them to provide the network telecom services second is the network equipment manufacturers which essentially uh, manufactures the components or the equipments which are being used to cater these services or which helps uh, transit the uh, network services then third is essentially the network providers uh, like uh, vodafone idea airtel jio right globally exxon mobil mobile right these are all telecom operators each of the telecom com uh, sector companies have their own set of considerations for accounting and auditing matters internal governance there are some inherent risk uh, like uh, the nature of the industry uh, significant usage of technology uh, for day to day reporting there are uh, various softwares or applications being used by telecom companies to record the revenue uh, to record uh, network sharing capacity sharing capacity swaps interconnectivity cross charges so these all are being recorded automatically through various systems and while we audit maybe the revenue or expense or other areas of any telecom companies it is very essential for us being an auditor of these uh, companies uh, which uses complex technology to have an it expert who can help us in itgc control in general vis a vis uh, the understanding or the or the uh, analyzing or vetting the recording of different different transactions by these complex systems or applications as far as telecom industry in india is concerned it comes on the second number across globe with a total subscriber base of 1.17 billion as of september 22 and uh, an overall tele density of approximately 85% let's see so as we all know telecommunication or the telecom industry plays a very vital role in developing the modern infrastructure space uh, it is very important for economic growth and overall growth of any economy because it eliminates the hindrance uh, towards the time and distance so we can freely communicate on a real time basis from a person sitting very far very near right so uh, it helps in saving time which again helps in building the uh, nation or the economic growth it was the fastest growing sector in the early 20s and has grown at a pace of around 35% over the last decade factors uh, which support the growth 
of this sector primarily is the evolving technology or advancement in technology we have seen uh, this sector growing or moving from 3g technology to 5g technology very fast in last 5 to 7 years then uh, there is a presence of world's largest in uh, networking equipment manufacturer be it nokia be it samsung the infrastructure provider be it american tower company there is an ericsson who is providing the network services or infrastructure upgrade services to these telecom companies then in the initial years there was uh, a low tele density but the gradually over the past few years it has improved in the urban areas it was very high in uh, rural areas and it has also improved there is a significant increase in rural presence we can see uh, the connectivity in the rural areas especially the villages and and uh, smaller uh, smaller towns have been connected uh, to the uh, uh, developed areas of the nation so this is the uh, phenomenal change within this sector which we have witnessed over a last few decade then uh, the government has recently permitted 100% fdi owing to that uh, agr issues this industry is very prone to litigations as well the agr issue uh, we all know there are some complex litigations being pending in um, all of the telecom companies be it airtel be it jio uh, be it uh, vodafone uh, for for the matter we all know recently i uh, some some 2 3 months ago i i heard a news like american tower company was uh, uh, was uh, reviewing their uh, asset base and uh, maybe uh, they were thinking of taking an impairment loss because of the dues of vodafone idea because of the vodafone idea then uh, as the companies invest heavily in the new technology for uh, adding a new customer base for providing additional services improving uh, the uh, network services there is also a uh, drawback uh, in incurring these expenditure like uh, we all know uh, there was hefty amount being incurred by these telecom companies uh, for acquisition of 5g spectrum licenses but have they been able to generate matching revenue or uh, they been able to add matching number of subscribers probably no because as a consumer we are uh, already using 4g we are able to uh, do the teams call if it relates to official use we are able to uh, um, navigate through uh, youtube we are able to uh, navigate through social sites and we are we are able to do uh, all the, all the things right so why would a rational consumer will move from 4g to 5g by incurring expenditure towards a new handset maybe he may be incur he may be required to incur uh, additional charges for uh, using that 5g right so companies uh, or the auditors uh, uh, who are auditing the telecom sector companies they need to consider this fact whether the amount uh, invested on the acquisition of 5g licenses uh, or the amount uh, the companies are in the process of incurring towards acquiring uh, networking equipment for 5g services to provide 5g services or to upgrade their uh, network equipments or their infrastructure to cater to the 5g services whether they would be able to generate enough revenue to match the expense they have already done or they are in the process of doing that so these are some of the uh, hit points or peculiar points which uh, we as an auditor need to examine or we should consider these points while uh, we start 
or uh, plan to kick off the audit for these uh, infra uh, tower infrastructure or network equipment companies or telecom companies so this is a wireless subscriber base in india which has moved from 2012 to 2022 we can see there is a significant shift in the last decade from 900 million to around 1150 million right then if we talk about the uh, telecom players uh, in india before the entry of jio there were several several around 10 10 operators with uh, handsome market share and uh, customer share but as we moved forward and uh, the entry of jio uh, we can see the smaller players which were operating uh, in some of the circles within india have been acquired by maybe either airtel or they have or they have been acquired by jio or they have uh, shut down their operations so uh, as of today uh, we actively have uh, like four four operators or four network uh, providers uh, the biggest being the jio and airtel then vodafone idea then bsnl others being the arcom mtnl right tata tele services has already been acquired by bharti airtel right and uh, this is the wireless subscriber base urban versus rural right so we can see this urban base is decreasing and has shifted from 64% to 54% a decline in 10% which is being catered to the rural areas so as i started with my statement uh, the connectivity in the rural areas or the towns with the smaller populations have increased there is a, a, a better connectivity in the last decade or the focus of the telecom sector was there in the last decade in uh, rural areas and semi urban areas so i talked about tele density so tele density is a measure which uh, measures uh, how many numbers of telephone lines is there per 100 uh, uh, per 100 persons in a country so we can see uh, in the case of urban areas it was 162 or 163% approximately in 2012 that means for each 100 person there were 162 connections which has improved and come down to a very uh, sophisticated number initially when when the telecom mobile services were started we we had seen uh, these sim cards were given for free with unlimited time periods with some talk time balances and also uh, the we as a consumer used to have two three numbers or we used to have sim cards utilize the uh, uh, balance and then take take the new numbers right but as we gradually moved uh, uh, grew uh, in the last decades this practice has gone down right so now uh, uh, 129% is the tele density in case of urban areas and uh, the tele density which was very low in case of uh, urban areas has improved significantly to the 58% so since a uh, telecom sector is a governed sector and highly technical and complex again it is very sensitive uh, to the geopolitical factors regulatory changes technological advancements it has its own merits and demerits uh, for all all of these changes right and accordingly it is governed by by number of regulatory bodies with be it ministry of uh, communications uh, dot tri right then we have uh, td set who is the uh, body to look after all the litigations and all then we have uh, spectrum management authority who looks after the management of licenses and spectrum which are being uh, allocated to each of the uh, network providers then uh, there is a competition commission who looks after the any acquisition or merger by these telecom providers whether the acquisition uh, is not uh, removing the uh, competitions in india so uh, these are uh, some of the regulatory bodies or uh, monitoring bodies or uh, or the or the agencies which uh, 
uh, which acts like a watchdog right and uh, having said that there are some of the summaries or some of the certificates which these network provider companies have to submit on a regular uh, regular basis to let's say dot or try like average revenue per unit uh, summary has to be deposited or uh, submitted with these uh, authorities so the principal regulatory authorities are dot uh, which is set up by ministry of communications and uh, again the tri is also the supreme body the responsibilities of dot includes uh, formulating the industry policy uh, or the sector specific policy for telecom and the technical standards uh, uh, which uh, specifies the network based frequencies uh, for each of the telecom operator based on their grade of licenses then it uh, provides license to operate in a particular circle so overall there are 22 circles in india uh, and uh, as per the government policy uh, to operate in a particular sector or circle uh, telecom company need to obtain a separate license so if bharti airtel wants to operate in all 22 circles it has to obtain all the 22 license to operate in all the circles there is no license which give blanket uh, Uh, approval or uh, access to all the circles then dot also administer the telecommunication resources like uh, whether uh, the numbers uh, or the density or the or the uh, spectrum frequency has been breached or not there are set uh, regulations by dot which has to be matched in terms of these technical uh, uh, technical uh, terms then maintaining uh, the fair competition in the market is also the responsibility or the duty of dot as far as uh, telecom regulatory of authority of india is concerned it was set up in 1997 uh, as an independent body which looks after the growth of telecom sector or telecommunication in the country right uh, the main objective is again to provide uh, a fair economic transparent environment where these telecom companies can operate functions include uh, the terms and conditions of the license which is provided by dot right uh, so it sets up the terms and conditions it ensures the compatibility uh, as to the technical standards and the interconnection between uh, these different service providers revocation of license is uh, being done by try in case of breach of any of the conditions it also fixes the terms and conditions of interconnection between different service providers it protects the consumers of telecommunication services if uh, we as a consumer are uh, facing any difficulty we can approach try we can file a complaint with try try put sets uh, uh, these uh, uh, complaints to the tdsat they administer uh, the or they uh, reviews the uh, complaints within the ambit of these policies and then passes the order which is binding on the compliant complainant and the complaint plaintiff efficient management of the available spectrum conducting uh, the uh, sale of the uh, spectrum through uh, through tendering so a tdsat is a dispute resolution uh, uh, sort of committee which was set up uh, in 2000 by by tri by an ordinance so it uh, adjudicate the any dispute between uh, the Uh, license provider and the licensee uh, between different telecom operators between service provider and consumers right it hears and dispose of the appeals as per the directions or decisions of the tri uh, decisions of uh, this uh, dispute settlement tribunal can be challenged directly in the supreme court like uh, in agr case the uh, order of the sct was challenged in the supreme court by telecom companies which was again set aside by supreme court and uh, ruled in favor of the dot so as i said uh, there are 22 circles in india 
for which licenses are required to operate a telecom company can provide only those services in such telecom circles in which it has been granted the license now agr issue so uh, just to highlight the agr issue the primary cause was the definition of this adjusted gross revenue so what was the issue is uh, as per the government regulations uh, telecom companies are required to pay certain percentage of their adjusted gross revenue to the government every quarter now the contention of the telecom companies was to exclude other income uh, gain on sale of purchase of property plant and equipments uh, interest income and other other type of incomes so their contention was uh, this uh, agr has to be uh, or this uh, percentage has to be purely given on the telecom related uh, revenue from telecom related services whereas the government is of the view uh, like uh, the this percentage has to be given on or on the complete revenue be it uh, telecom related be it not not a telecom related and this led to the dispute between the telecom companies and the government of india through its ministry which after after i think 15 uh, 15 odd years it was ruled in favor of the government and uh, all of the companies were required to pay hefty amount uh, which comprises the agr dues or uh, the penalty the interest component largest being for the vodafone idea approximately 53000 crores for uh, airtel uh, it was around 35000 crores so what government gave uh, the uh, the option to pay in installment so 10% was to be paid up front and remaining can be paid in equal installment over a tenure of 10 years so uh, we can see this as a deferred uh, liability in uh, in the financial statements of any of the telecom companies who has not paid uh, their complete dues so this was the overall architect or overall Uh, uh overall uh, summary of agr issue in the telecom sector so this has not been resolved yet in uh, late 2021 government came up with a statement uh, they will uh, consider or they will amend the agr definition and uh, the coai is in talks or holding discussion with telecom companies coai is the body which represents telecom companies uh, to the government uh, so they are holding discussions to finalize the agr definition and then represent to the ministry uh, so that uh, there is a definition which is uh, acceptable to both government and uh, the telecom companies plus uh, when this uh, spectrum licenses were given the government challenged the amount uh, they quote the quoted by the telecom companies the allegations being uh, from the government side that uh, the uh, the telecom companies have uh, formed the cartel and uh, accordingly they have quoted the amount which was not Uh, what the government expected and accordingly there are some litigations going on uh, on that issue as well so we'll come to that also so as i said uh, uh, before 1999 there was a uh, uh, fixed revenue model for the spectrum usage right and uh, from 1999 onwards the revenue sharing model uh, came into picture which we call it agr sharing uh, some per percentage on the gross revenue or adjusted gross revenue the revenue from which telecom operator agreed to share with government is the agr initially it started 15% of the agr now it is currently i think 18% or oh, sorry 8% it has been uh, decreased gradually as the uh, revenue increased the reason of this uh, dues or this issue was government and telecom operators differed on the definition of agr the telecom operator contended agr should only include 
core telecom services whereas government contended it should also include known core revenue which uh, includes fd income gain on sale of uh, ppe scrap sale etc and it led to the litigation in 2005 which was settled through a supreme court order in 2019 after 14 odd years here we can see a snapshot uh, which shows like 53000 crore is the demand for vodafone idea in total it includes uh, the dues the penalty charges uh, the interest for 10 15 years Uh, this twenty one thousand is uh, the self assessment, what uh, they estimated, and thirty five hundred is what they have paid uh, till the this was in news. This is for Bharti Airtel thirty five thousand they estimated. Thirty five thousand being demanded by DOT or Tri, and thirteen thousand is what they estimated. Eighteen thousand they have paid so far, and remaining uh, they are in process of uh, pro giving in ten installments. so uh, this was the uh, settlement uh, mechanism 10% of the total agr to be given uh, by march 321 and uh, the balance in a staggered basis from 21 to 31 so uh, those who are auditing the telecom companies uh, they could see the deferred payment uh, which pertains to agr there could be other deferred payment also being for the for the capital purchases but uh, majority of the amount would would be applicable for agr so this is uh, uh, the statement where government uh, announced that uh, they will rationalize the definition of agr and uh, they will exclude non telecom revenue and this will be applicable on a prospective basis this does not mean the previous dues will be waived off they will have to pay uh, what what is being announced by the supreme court so cellular operation association of india coai is uh, the body which represents telecom service provider is in talks with all the telecom operators to arrive at a definition and then it will be discussed with the with the tri or dot or other bodies so that uh, there is a consensus on the on the definition between the government and the telecom operators Now these are the fees uh, which are payable uh, by these telecom operators to the government uh, in case of spectrum purchases. Uh, the one-time fees is payable uh, for the spectrum allocation, for which the amount is quoted by by these uh, uh, telecom companies. Then there is a quarterly license fees, which is eight uh, percent currently, uh, for which dispute was there. Then uh, quarterly spectrum usage charge. it is also payable uh, to the government on the usage of the or the revenue earned from the usage of the spectrum which is allocated to each of the uh, telecom companies telecom uh, the kpis for telecom companies as i uh, mentioned at the start there are some uh, four five kpis like average revenue per user so generally uh, the uh, this term is called as arpu uh, the average revenue per unit we can uh, find this uh, uh, number for each of the telecom companies in their annual annual report and uh, and uh, this is the measure for for their profitability investors also look look for for this arpu when they want to invest in any of the telecom companies so some companies have also started uh, measuring average revenue per minute or uh, for postpaid and prepaid separately for their uh, internal internal uh, uh, control perspective to better manage their resources to see uh, the profitability within within the inter segment or within the intra segment to better monitor the progress of their different different packages this is also important to know what customer segment is having the higher average revenue so that they can issue the promotional schemes to that particular segment uh 
some of you might be giving might be getting some of the promotional messages from from your network providers this is again based on the history of your particular average revenue per unit so there is a particular system which calculates arpu for each of the customer or each of the number and based on which uh, these telecom uh, companies decides uh, whether uh, they want to give promotional uh, schemes or discounts to particular customer or not if uh, uh, let's say there is a customer who has very good history in terms of average revenue so uh, the companies will not let uh, that customer to leave their uh, uh, their network and uh, join some other network so it facilitates uh, the customer retentions as well so you can see it uh, it it says it act as a yardstick to measure the revenue generated from high spending customers and customers who are not profitable right so telecom services providers have started offering bundled services in order to increase arpu metrics so again uh, there is a there is a promotional schemes there are marketing uh, schemes which are based on the average revenue per customer some companies also also use average revenue per minute to measure unit cost versus revenue uh, to see whether they are incurring uh, the cost uh, on the customer side or to acquire customer uh, uh, is within within the uh, budget or they can increase that amount they can uh, spend more right so this this is the uh, most uh, important kpi or metrics which govern uh, the overall architecture in comes of in terms of the uh, customer retention and customer acquisition and also the revenue projections when uh, the second uh, uh, matrix is minutes of usage which uh, tells the telecom companies the total usage in minutes in a month a particular customer has used uh, what what amount of minutes in a particular month right so again uh, it can be further segregated within postpaid and prepaid or incoming and outgoing right uh, this is also used to design the promotional schemes or promotional campaigns that uh, may be catered to a specific group of people who are very profitable for the company right third is the churn rate uh, Churn rate means the net number of uh, uh, customers who have left the left the network and moved on to another network, right? Uh, so, by uh, calculating this matrix, company can know the increase in the number of the customers who are uh, leaving the network, and accordingly, they can try hard to retain their customer based on their. arpu history they are minutes of usage history right plus uh, the companies are also in the process or they have developed some analytics which can enable which can uh, help them to build uh, predictions or or some financial models with predictions which help them in identifying uh, whether these customers who are leaving or who are churning the company may be profitable in future or not so that they can take corrective actions Uh, uh and uh, and uh, ensure the customers are uh, retained fourth being the subscriber acquisition cost uh, subscriber acquisition cost is uh, like the cost uh, to obtain a contract uh, the total spend divided by number of additional subscribers so subscriber acquisition cost is again a measure uh, which figure out the total average cost per subscriber being incurred for addition of a single customer it takes into account uh, all the uh, cost maybe marketing cost maybe dealer commission maybe sales cost maybe sim card cost advertisement cost subsidy any distribution cost right so all of these are included in the subscriber acquisition cost uh it can be uh, compared again with the arpu to figure whether it is worth is um, worth to spend so much amount on the acquisition or if they can afford to increase uh, the spending 
to acquire more customer so all of the kpis are interrelated to each other uh, in terms of their functionality in terms of their importance in terms of their working in terms of their calculations and uh, more importantly in terms of their impact uh, on the revenue and cost of the company all of these uh, metrics are being also um, in one or the other way uh, being uh, used by the different different agencies the regulators also the investors so as an auditor uh, we should be checking the base for all of these metrics uh, whether the base taken to calculate these metrics is correct or not right so there could be like uh, if we are getting uh, we are calculating average revenue per user so whether we are uh, considering the total active consumers at the end of the reporting period or total active consumers in a given uh, year or at a start of the year right so they could materially uh, differ and uh, accordingly the average revenue per user may be inflated or deflated right so very carefully we need to examine the number of subscribers because revenue uh, in any case we are auditing so that will be coming directly from the financial statement but uh, the number of subscribers uh, the companies can play uh, very cleverly to adjust their average revenue per share so as an auditor uh, we have the the responsibility to or we have the duty or, or the or the uh, or the risk lies over here uh, whether the average revenue per user is calculated correctly or not then again uh, for the minutes of usage number of customers again could be at the start of the year at the end of the year or maybe uh, the total number of customers within a year right uh, so that has to be again seen uh, what are the what are the parameters uh, given by any regulatory authorities or what uh, sort of parameters are being used by the peers in the industry uh, the globally that has to be checked here subscriber acquisition cost again need to see whether company is considering all associated cost or not or uh, whether the cost which is being considered is only towards the acquisition of new customer or not right so very carefully we need to examine uh, this also so as we move to the audit approach and procedures so as we all know uh, before starting any engagement or any audit we should uh, be having the overview of that company the knowledge of the industry uh, you know or uh, the risk uh, which are uh, uh, prominent in that particular industry the challenges uh, for that particular industry what are the uh, regulations uh, we had just now discussed right what are the controls uh, which are necessary for that particular company whether they have been implemented or not at right? the general uh, general uh, audit approach so uh, sa 315 also specifies uh, the identifying and assessing the uh, risk of material misstatement which uh, we will be aware of when we understand the entity we obtain the knowledge of its operations the environment in which it operates uh, so uh, to do all this uh, uh, the preliminary knowledge check on the industry on the company's ownership uh, its key management uh, the history of the company right so what we can do is we can look for the relevant industry industry sector uh, uh uh relevant industry uh, uh uh insights from from the from the industry specific documents or industry specific regulation uh, publications uh any regulatory uh, authority bodies uh, which are governing the industry we need to know the functioning of that what all comes within their ambit what are the regulations Uh, what are the policies uh, which companies are required to follow and uh, external factors uh, like uh, the uh, the 
what is uh, the uh, what is going on with the peers how the particular telecom industry behaving uh, globally are there any any uh, any uh, external forces which are derived, which is uh, which is uh, impacting the functioning of the company this all uh, uh, we have to be aware while uh, we plan to audit a particular company right so uh, we need to be uh, need to be knowledgeable about the operations of the company like in case of telecom we have certain uh, verticals like uh, the uh, mobile services uh, home services so within mobile there are again various products like uh, the value added services data services voice services uh, within the home home section we have d2h uh, then there could be others then we have uh, the business segment where uh, they may be providing the wi-fi they may be setting the network uh, for the companies lease line for the company so uh, we, we need to be aware about the each and every product they are offering their customer segment their governance structure uh, the investment uh, they are holding, uh, how the company is financed, um, uh, by the, whether through the loans or equity. So this all we have to be aware before we start uh, the audit or we plan the audit. Then of course about the uh, accounting policies um, and the and the other requirements of the statute. Maybe any guidance note is applicable, any other uh, any other uh, ICI guidance or MCA guidance is applicable to the company. We should be aware of that. And uh, then we should start our uh, audit. Mm, we should uh, then obtain the uh, knowledge uh, from number of sources, previous experience with the, with the other industry or entity. Uh, if let's say current due to rotation, we are, uh, uh, we are the auditor of let's say X company. So if we were already the auditor of uh, auditor of any other company within the same industry, we can use that knowledge. We can hold discussion with the senior management, maybe uh, finance head, maybe corporate head, legal head, taxation head, the technical head, right? To have an understanding on all the aspects or all the all the captions of the financial statements or the or the annual reports right uh, we can have a discussion with the csr head to know the csr plans right we can have discussion with the internal audit head to know about the internal controls uh, whether they are operating effectively commensurate with the size of the company or not we can have discussion with the hr head to know about whether they are following or they are in compliance with all the all the uh, uh, all the provisions which are related to uh, employee welfare, be it gratuity, be it PF, be it ESI, be it uh, any, any other provisions, uh, right? Uh, then we can visit the entity premises. Uh, we should uh, be uh, reading the publications on, on particular industry. We should search for uh, any publications for, for uh, that particular company, any, any document in public domain for that particular company. Uh, legislation and regulations we have already talked about then we should uh, uh, read the document which are provided by the entity be it uh, the minutes of meeting any agreement any contract internal reports Then uh, we can uh, obtain the understanding uh, for the entity, its operations, its industry in four broad uh, uh, parameters, uh, market overview, uh, its strategy, its value creating activities and the financial performance. So market overview is uh, the competitive environment where it operates, understanding its peers, its competitors, its regulatory framework, the micro and macroeconomic environment where uh, it operates and which impacts the entity right uh, strategy includes the goals and objectives of the company the overall design and architecture the corporate governance framework of the entity right uh, the third one being a value creating activity uh, we need to assess how dynamic is the in, uh, industry like telecommunication is highly technological Right, it is uh, very rapidly changing. Have a significant uh, improvement or advance in the technology. Right, 
and uh, this again uh, is very important from uh, the angle of impairment analysis we can again link the sub substan sub very sub subtle change in the technology or advancement in technology can lead to the impairment for the uh, previous technology like we are seeing moving uh, from 4g to 5g so there could be a pressure on the on the amount invested in the 4g technologies these companies would not have recovered the whole investment in 4g and like uh, when 4g was introduced there was 3g right so again uh, all of these factor uh, are linked uh, linked uh, from one or the another matrix in the financial statements also like the investment uh, which we talked about which i talked about on 5g uh, may have uh, the uh, may have the question mark on the going concern assessment in coming years not today but maybe maybe two three down uh, years down the line uh, the litigations these companies are involved in we should be aware of that because uh, uh, if you see the financial statement of any of the telecom companies uh, there are very large numbers which are being disclosed as the contingent liability uh, as and when uh, these liabilities are confirmed there could be a significant amount which becomes payable to the government along with maybe penalties and and interest so again uh, at that point in time there could be a question mark on the going concern uh, going concern assessment right so very uh, uh, important to look for these factor uh, when we when we get involved in the audit of of uh, any new industry and uh, we should try to link everything right it is it is very interesting and very important to to do our job as an auditor because everything we know about the company or the or the industry or the management or the technology which the company is using uh, has the significant financial impact then again financial performance there could be significant capital expenditure being incurred or companies in the process of incurring again Mm, need to see whether uh, that can be recovered uh, whether the amortization has started when the amortization should start right like in the case of a spectrum uh, ideally the amortization should start when the network equipment are ready but again need to check uh, if uh, let's say companies have invested in 2010 the network equipment are not ready let's say for next 5 years so there may be an impairment required for the amount invested in the spectrum license so everything uh, has to be linked uh, linked uh, uh, while we uh, start the audit or uh, while we know anything and everything about the companies in bits and pieces so uh, when i talked about uh, the need of an it expert uh, as a part of audit team this is due to the complex systems being used we can see different type of erp applications being used by the company like uh, oracle e business sap then postpaid and prepaid again are using different different uh, systems bscs arbor intelligent network and they are all highly integrated and work on a real time basis again we need to check whether they are actually working on a real time basis or uh, there is a need to recognize any provision uh, with respect to the cut off requirement right then uh, interconnection billing happens due to uh, uh, application called intact now uh, what is interconnect billing so interconnect billing is uh, when let's say uh, a customer uh, a airtel customer calls uh, the customer of jio so in that case uh, the airtel has to make some payment to the to the jio because that is connecting the calls to the jio network so they are all pre decided it happens automatically but again uh, that has to be checked by some relevant expert and where the use of uh, information technology expert comes in need to actually check whether uh, if the airtel is claiming the call was for 13 second whether it actually landed for 13 second on the jio network or it was 14 or 12 second right 
the other could be uh, if uh, the uh, airtel customer or the airtel is using the geo infrastructure for transmitting any network uh, if let's say airtel is using uh, geo's fiber cable or optical fiber cable then again uh, we need to have the interconnection uh, billing which is being done by the intech it is all integrated but again uh, someone has to check to comment on on the on these accuracy and uh, true and fair view and uh, to report the correct revenue and then there is a crm which uh, is for customer relationship management more of uh, the uh, from the regulatory side and then there are different different reconciliation tools and applications which keeps on happening with the, the big customers and with the other service providers due to this interconnection billing system and cross charges so what activity with uh, this it specialist will do uh, when we call them to uh, to perform uh, to perform the audit on our behalf he may be testing the general control uh, general it gc control uh, application control uh, the systems control plus validating the automated application control on all of the applications which we have seen uh, in the previous slide uh, he should be testing the integrity of uh, data which is generated by a system and uh, the reports which are being used and uh, also check sample on a test check basis to corroborate the understanding that uh, these uh, systems are generating or recording revenue on a real time basis accurately and as desired they are in compliant with the relevant ndas right uh, there are uh, uh, no uh, otherwise results which can um, pose any question mark on these systems right no audit risk there are some some risk which are inherent uh in any of the companies so when we when we audit any financial statements we overcome with uh, with various uh, various uh, mistakes and various uh, various uh, uh, misstatements which may be material which may not be material so inherent risk is that financial statements can contain a material misstatement and uh, there could be chance we as an auditor may not be may not be able to detect that risk that is an engagement or detection risk so again we need to devise our audit procedure so that uh, we can overcome these inherent and detection risk right <laughs> so the risk is specific to telecom industry uh, could be any of these following again these are all illustrative uh, the list can never be exhaustive uh, there could be a few newer and newer risk like one being uh, uh, the recent is the non utilization of spectrum acquired this is uh, the real case of 5g where uh, the amount is invested but uh, the companies are not able to utilize uh, the 5g spectrum because uh, there is no business use case as of now uh, because uh, the 4g is functioning very very uh, efficiently at a very good speed it is giving uh, absolute uh, um, magnificent results right plus as a consumer if uh, they wants to shift from 4g to 5g they have to buy a new handset which is again an investment from the consumer point of view right uh, the high price has to be paid for for 5 for using 5g technology <laughs> battery gets drained uh, very very quickly right cost has to be incurred for being in the market that's why this 5g technology has been acquired by the company if someone asks me a question why why the airtel or let's say the uh, reliance jio has acquired 5g 5g spectrum if there is no business use case the answer uh, i would say is uh, as a company they have to be in a business have, they have to be in a competition they have to be in a race and they have to be ready for future and that's why this investment but 
as of today there is no utilization or very low utilization again uh, leading to the uh, question mark on the impairment right then uh, there could be complex transactions maybe uh, they may be having forwards they may be having futures and options they may be uh, importing network equipment and again uh, with a very complex payment terms there could be an embedded derivative within these contracts because normally the rentals for these towers or uh, or the payments for these network equipments are linked to some index and also there could be an embedded derivative there could be an accounting required to separate or not to separate the embedded derivatives again depends on the terms uh, right upon uh, then there there are litigations uh, as we talked already uh, some of the litigations which are very common are spectrum the agr then uh, uh, microwave rates being uh, revised by the dot then there are entertainment tax entry tax gst service tax issues so uh, these are very peculiar in the telecom industry uh, uh, they have to comply with the conditions uh, formulated by the tri or dot otherwise there could be penalties on that right uh, then there is a dependency on real time network and it systems where uh, if there is a breakdown it can impact the revenue recognition or expense provisioning uh, so these are some of the peculiar telecom industry audit risk we must be aware and we should plan our audit considering all these because uh, we we have to we have to consider uh, these risk as the as the inherent risk as 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 we discussed in this slide we need to consider these are the inherent risk in any telecom industry whether actually they are not that will be uh, corroborated uh, while we perform our audit or while we perform our audit procedures but we have to consider this as the inherent risk in the telecom industry so uh, there could be again the risk of fraud uh sa240 requires us to make the inquiry of management the internal audit functions we should identify or audit unusual or expected transactions unexpected relationships between entities we should maintain an audit of professional skepticism throughout our audit whether be it a junior level employee or a senior management we should be having multiple discussions separately and in uh, group with the team which handles the financial reporting process and uh, we should be having discussion for any unusual or inappropriate entries uh, which are being uh, identified at the time of uh, je testing estimates and judgments are very very important in case of telecom industry due to the ambit of litigations plus a uh, judgment is also required in case of uh, the lease rental for for uh, tower company for tower infrastructure what happens is uh, these uh, lease arrangement for towers with the infrastructure companies is uh, for a long term duration which ranges from 5 years to 10 years and in some some cases the lease rental is negotiated and uh, is not finalized at the reporting date so two questions here why they are negotiated and why they are not finalized so suppose uh, there is a company who has given uh, towers on lease to let's say airtel and the vodafone idea now as we all know vodafone idea is incurring uh, hefty losses and uh, they are not able to pay the lease rentals so what what happens is bharti airtel also negotiates to decrease the lease rentals as they contend uh, the particular tower company may be may be charging the loss of that uh, vodafone idea to airtel also so they keep on negotiating the lease rentals and accordingly uh, it takes time to to get finalized and uh, as on the balance sheet date they may not be having the 
uh, final number. So the provisional accounting is uh, is done, uh, which again requires the estimates and judgments. Litigation we have talked about again. PPR analysis is required. Whether uh, that has to be there has to be provision, there has to be confirmed liability, or only the uh, contingent liability. So impairment of property, plant, and equipment, intangible asset, intangible asset could be your spectrum. Uh, impairment of uh, trade receivables and other receivables. Defer tax recoverability. Uh, we could see uh, some of the audit reports of the telecom companies. Uh, they are having uh, the recoverability of defer tax as the key audit matters because uh, in the initial in the in the in the last couple of years when the companies were having losses there were dta so uh, and uh, there was huge amount of dta being recorded and uh, that has to be uh, corroborated with the with the future projections whether there are enough profit available in near future where this dta can be can be utilized or not and again uh, you can see some of the companies in the telecom industry within india uh, they must be having this uh, as a part of cam revenue recognition uh, in the telecom sector so revenue recognition is again uh, uh, a complex thing as we are as we have discussed till now it is very uh, different from all other industry because uh, if we talk about uh, manufacturing industry we have sale of goods uh, there could be some goods which may be bundled but uh, not as complex as of the telecom sector in telecom sector uh, there are wide range of product which are bundled uh, together and offered to the customer right uh, very judgmental and complex area uh, uh, from that perspective so uh, this accounting or the revenue recognition involves uh, very significant judgment so that each of the component can be recognized separately uh, as required by nds 115 uh, again uh, there are complexities uh, in in identifying the transaction as a principal or agent right uh, that uh, assessment has to be done uh, for uh, each transactions or each uh, stream of transactions then again uh, the complexities could be uh, the sale and purchase of the capacity uh, it could be a lease it could not be a lease and accordingly need to identify on a contract to contract basis uh, whether india's 116 is applicable or india's 115 is applicable right so uh, the significant issue in the in the case of capacity transactions which normally happens in case of uh, telecom companies uh, to use the optical fiber cables uh, uh, is whether uh, there's a right to use uh, use that particular uh, uh, capacity portion or it is a sale which is again a key consideration uh, for that uh, for that uh, assessment uh, whether it will go to India's 115 or whether it will go to India's 116. So in telecom sector, uh, there is significant expenditure uh, in recent year on the spectrum purchase. And uh, as I said, amortization should start when uh, the network license with the the related network equipment can be used or they are in the usable uh, uh, position right so uh, this has to be estimated uh, uh, so because a spectrum license are being given for a specific period uh, for let's say 20 years if the networking equipment uh, takes substantial time to get ready or uh, management is uh, intentionally delaying the 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 period uh, to get uh, these equipment ready because uh, uh, there is no uh, no business use case as of now like in case of 5g so the period of amortization of that particular spectrum license has to be estimated very carefully right 
in case of property plan and equipments again uh, we need to see from the perspective of uh, componentization and again uh, associated uh, depreciation and amortization whether uh, we can capitalize the internal labor and similar cost or they have to be charged off against as the cost of acquisition right decommissioning provisions has to be has to be looked in for the property taken on lease right for any tower taken on lease whether uh, the agreement requires uh, as a part of that agreement to have the aro obligation so there are some questions uh, or fact use case fact from the from the revenue recognition uh, aspect of the telecom companies so uh, assume there is a fixed line communication companies offering a fixed line uh, uh, and uh, it enters into a voice and data services with a customer uh, for 24 months uh, the price being 50 dollar per month after 6 month customer decides to add one additional services which is tv for an incremental cost of 50 dollar per month uh for the uh, same term which is uh, one uh, 18 months remaining 18 months this price is relatively lower than the price charged to other customer right in this scenario assume there are no other fees or deliverables how should the company account for this modification since the tv services are distinct performance obligation and they are being charged uh, separately at the relatively standalone price it does not matter whether company is charging less in comparison to other customers so uh, there will not be any accounting impact on the existing services because the company is charging for that new services so these kind of uh, things keep on happening in the telecom sector another uh, type of uh, uh, revenue recognition could be a company enters into a contract again to provide wireless telecom services for 50 dollar per month plus a handset which is of 100 dollar activation fees is also charged for 30 dollar per month uh, the communication company sells handset separately also how many separate performance obligations are in the contract see uh, primarily there are two performance obligation which exist in the arrangement one is uh, the handset and the other is telecom services now activation services is not a service which can be utilized or can be used independently until unless uh, the customer will have the sim card or the handset uh, there is no use of that activation service and accordingly that should be used that should be uh, recognized upfront or or over the period uh, uh, as as deem as management things right there could be various views uh, in the market but uh, this is the best uh, uh, logical and reasonable view right uh, because uh, there are not performance obligation they are upfront payment for the handset and future telecom services until unless activation is not there uh, how a consumer will use the handset all the telecom services right and again depending on the fact the company may need further as to assess uh, the nature of the telecom services to determine whether uh, these services are separate performance obligation or they need to be uh, combined with the handset only so uh, there are various uh, various type of uh, revenue recognition examples uh, so let let's see this one uh, there is a company uh, which enters into contract to provide telecom services for uh, 50 dollar per month and uh, it also provides an equipment maybe networking equipment for uh, the 200 dollar there's a discount of uh, 100 dollar if uh, they submit a proper form uh, or or some proof in the form of uh, rebate the company based on the past history knows that 75% uh, company's customer will uh, apply for this rebate right uh, the 75% rebate uh, this uh, 100 dollar uh, 100 rebate right 
so uh, and the company conclude there are no external economic factor that affect this trend so how uh, the company should estimate the transaction price since company knew uh, the past history so they can uh, use that probability based approach and uh, as such company has uh, used that uh, approach like 25% will not come so there is a zero 75% will come so weighted amount is $75 and accordingly uh, out of the out of this uh, 75 has to be uh, deferred out of this uh, 100 75 has to be deferred and for 25 can be booked as the uh, revenue because there will not be a significant revenue reversal for this 25 dollar and uh, this 75 has to be uh, booked as a revenue as as and when the time passes for for uh, each purchases or each sale So uh, this uh, example relates to the uh, subscriber acquisition cost. <coughs> uh, subscriber acquisition cost, which can be capitalized, uh, should be the additional cost, which should have been avoided if uh, the company was not eyeing the particular customer. So in this case, uh, the uh, there is a retail store uh, within a mall from where the uh, telecom services are being uh, sold to the customer, right? So a sales agent employed at the store, uh, it signs 120 customers to a two-year telecom services contract in a particular month. So that means they have added 120 new customers. Rent for this uh, shop is 5,000 and uh, the commission for the sale uh, of these uh, uh, telecom service contract uh, are uh, 12000 and and uh, sorry uh, the wages is 12000 and the commission is 24000 communication company also offers customer free or significant handset to create incentive for them the net subsidy on handset is 36000 the retail store also incur 2000 on a monthly basis in a local general so we need to see how much is the customer acquisition cost which can be deferred as an asset see uh, this 5000 12000 and 24000 and this 2000 these are the sunk cost companies already incurring whether it acquires any customer or not so this 36000 can be can be said to be an um, customer acquisition cost which can be uh, capitalized in the in the in the books and uh, should be amortized considering uh, this uh, two two years period <coughs> one uh, classic case uh, in the telecom industry uh, is uh, the factoring where uh, what happens is some of the telecom companies may sell the receivables to banks or other financial institutions and uh, again uh, in those cases uh, it has to be estimated at the start um, or or when they recognize uh, the revenue uh, whether they what is the business model because uh, if uh, the business model is right is uh, hold to sell only then uh, this uh, asset should be fair value through profit and loss instead of amortized cost as we can see, uh, telecommunication entities might manage credit risk by entering into factoring arrangement where they can sell receivables to the third party and transfers all the related risk. So uh, if the business model is uh, as and when the debtors are being recorded, they will be sold off to the banks or the financial institution. So instead of amortized cost that uh, has to be recorded, the debtor has to be recorded as FVTPL, uh, that is fair value uh, through profit and loss. It says uh, an entity uh, will be receiving cash flows from selling uh, if the factoring results in derecognition of the receivables. So uh, if the business model is held to sell, in that case, the derecognition principle will apply and uh, the FVPL criteria will come in. In case uh, uh, the held to sale is not there, but uh, company has a mixed uh, business model they don't know uh, whether they will be se selling the portfolio or which portfolio they will be selling right or uh, let's say they have uh, factored uh, the debtors with the banks but they are they are still liable and accordingly there is no de recognition principle applies 
in that case amortization amortized cost category would be applicable one uh, situation in case of telecom company is uh, a double relative double double impact in the profit and loss account uh, where companies uh, have the long term contract with their customers so they will be having uh, the long term trade receivables and again the significant financing component uh, on them so uh, due to the significant financing component they will be having uh, the impact on the profit and loss account in in the form of finance cost right uh, the financing element and uh, again uh, due to the ecl uh, ecl provisions uh, company will be recording the uh, expected credit loss uh, through provision matrix on these uh, receivables as well so this amounts to the double impact on the profit and loss account uh, that is the interconnection interaction between india's 115 and india's 111109 in case of long term receivables or long term contracts so uh, these are the different streams uh, of revenue from telecom companies uh, excess charges and airtime usage charges Uh, as we already discussed excess charges are uh, the charges for uh, or the revenue from the prepaid and the postpaid consumers which is recognized on a time basis earlier uh, as we all know where the prepaid cards were uh, were uh, were coming uh, were there with uh, the lifetime validity and uh, the talk time uh, can be used uh, till till infinite times so at that time uh, the revenue for prepaid uh, cards were is used as and when the when the that talk time was used but now since uh, the prepaid or the postpaid connection come come up with the with the limited validity let's say for 28 days or 84 days or 56 days so other uh, revenue is uh, re accrued on a on a on a uh, days basis right in case of roaming revenue uh, when the services are rendered the uh, revenue um, gets recognized automatically uh, revenue which is due from the foreign carriers uh, let's say uh, there is a telecom operator outside india and uh, his customer uh, makes a call uh, while he is in india and uses the airtel network <laughs> so uh, as and when that call occurs that revenue gets recognized and same is the case when an indian uh, cust uh, the customer of an indian telecom companies uh, visit uh, outside india and they do the call uh, the expense gets recorded in that period interconnect fees uh, as uh, we discussed is recognized for uh, all the abroad transitioning across the network within india interconnection fees is no more there uh, this has been done away by by dot so it was decreased uh, in a phased manner and uh, then it is uh, uh, not there so what uh, the indian service providers have to do, have to uh, pay to each other is the carrier charges so while the customer of uh, the airtel when it calls for the call on the jio sim and it uses the network uh, of or the or the tower infrastructure of the jio uh, then the airtel has to pay some carrier charges to carry that call to the to the uh, jio network so there are some uh, agreements among all the service providers and uh, that has to be paid uh, by by the service provider uh, among themselves based on which network customer is calling whose networks customer then a uh, leased line revenue uh, uh, suppose uh, airtel has uh, a leased line or or a laid down optical fiber cable within the country and uh, all other uh, service providers are using uh, that uh, particular leased line so this has to be 
uh, the other other service provider has to has to pay uh, to the uh, to the airtel for using that lease line on a on a on a, again on a days basis maybe monthly maybe quarterly uh, whatever the agreement is there uh, then uh, some of the companies also charge the connection fees uh, maybe for postpaid maybe for prepaid right for activating the network services uh, maybe the handset maybe dth maybe sim card or or uh, whatever uh, the service is being provided so it is not possible to demonstrate uh, this connection fees is in respect of uh, uh, particular services right accordingly this amount uh, received need to be uh, need to be recognized when this uh, equipment or phone is installed or or the connection is established just like the installation revenue then uh, within the telecom industry there are several arrangements uh, where uh, the multiple services or bundled goods and services are being given there are various apps are being given for contents and all right uh, uh, like uh, network uh, wireless network operator uh, typically sells a handset with wide range of wireless services right there may be a single contract or there may be uh, stated in uh, uh, or implied uh, due to the customary business practice so example could be a sale of handset and the and the uh, let's say sim of the airtel right uh, both of these represent separate performance obligation and accordingly we need to recognize the revenue uh, based on their standalone pr uh, price because uh, handset can also be sold separately that uh, network services can also be sold separately uh, set top box is again uh, again a uh, uh, relative bundled uh, product which comes up uh, with the activation fees the monthly subscription the uh, price for set top box which again uh, may be leased or may be sold that has to be assessed uh, for for each transaction so if it is concluded um, that such set top box uh, are not meeting the criteria for leases as defined in ds 116 so that comes within the ambit of ds 115 and uh, uh, we need to determine whether set top box are separate performance obligation or that amount has to be recog recognized on a monthly subscription basis along with the monthly subscription so again uh, all of these things requires judgment very complex judgment for each of the transactions each type of contracts there is no uh, set rules for any any such transactions because uh, they could materially differ as per uh, or or uh, if one or more term term is changed activation and sim card fees so we have discussed yeah so gross versus net accounting so the primary rule is if uh, the network providers are having the risk associated with the transaction then uh, there could be a principal to principal arrangement otherwise it should be as an agent so significant risk and reward of, of a particular transaction should lie with the network operator plus a uh, second uh, second uh, uh, example in gross versus net could be the interconnection fees where let's say customer is uh, charging from their sorry network or provider is charging from their customer and it is uh, passing on some part to the other network service provider so in that case also uh, since this transaction is happening on on a principal basis the network service provider is uh, is having the significant risk or is the primary responsible for providing services to its customer then it should be uh, recognized on a on a principal to principal basis only plus uh, likewise in the case of content uh, if uh, uh, through the ott platform the content is only passing through uh, there is no role being played by the network operators then it is again as an uh, agent and should be booked uh, the book the revenue on the net basis 
but where it uh, it takes the content from from let's say third party and uh, it uh, gives as per as per its plans or 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 uh, or its own strategy then uh, it could be on a gross basis because <coughs> in that case it is retaining uh, the risk uh, and reward associated with the rights of that content in defeasible right of use again uh, in the case of capacity or or fiber fibers uh, that uh, has to be uh, again viewed from the perspective of india's 116 leases uh, again uh, whether it is a operating lease or or a finance lease uh, there are set uh, questions uh, what does the contract offer the acquirer whether a specified period is there <coughs> in which that capacity can be used whether uh, the acquirer is uh, able to resell the capacity or not who maintains the network and bears the risk of obsolescence all of these uh, questions uh, collaboratively will uh, give an answer whether it is a finance lease or an operating lease capacity swap again uh, the network uh, different network providers uh, use uh, or uh, capacity in in the in the circles in which uh, they operate or let's say airtel is operating in one of the circle jio is not using they can use the capacity swap there uh, right so and there could be a settlement on a net basis so a diligent analysis has to be there uh, or need to be done for all the facts and circumstances right so that uh, that can be accounted appropriately uh, considering the substance of the transaction right <coughs> because uh, if there are non monetary <coughs> changes that has to be uh, accounted at the fair value of the of the goods or services given up and accordingly that has to be accounted so accounting for spectrum cost license fees and its period of amortization uh, we have already discussed uh, at many times uh, during previous slides so a uh, spectrum cost uh, has to be capitalized and uh, the amortization normally starts when the related networking equipments are ready right uh, and over the period of usage or uh, the license period whichever is less one question uh, in comes of the in terms of the property plan and equipment is uh, the physical verification it is very complex task to do the physical verification so we as an auditor uh, uh, have to have to uh, be mindful of that fact and uh, should consider the other uh, procedures so that uh, we can uh, we can carefully report that uh, uh, that uh, in the caro because uh, after this amendment in caro 2020 there is a detailed uh, reporting required on that aspect plus uh, uh, um, uh, the in the pp items are lying uh, at various locations so we as an auditor has to see how the company has ensured uh, the physical verification of 100% of its ppe item the second uh, complex thing here is uh, the com componentization issue <laughs> how the company has ensured or uh, done the componentization of uh, various uh, networking equipments or other property plant and equipments uh, some of the key components for the for the prominent assets are the like satellite fiber optic ip backbone cable infrastructure in case of networking assets uh, we have towers diesel generator set cabling circuit transmitters etc telecom tower companies valuation this is more uh, from the perspective of impairment uh, because uh, as the as the uh, the classic case of uh, the vodafone idea since it is not doing good uh, it is not able to pay dues to the infrastructure companies so uh, these infrastructure companies have also uh, installed tower or have contract with the, with the vodafone companies 
in in most of the cases uh, like i i mentioned uh, at the start american tower company uh, uh, who has receivable from uh, the vodafone idea was uh, was uh, thinking of uh, uh, in charging impairment loss of uh, some 400 millions and uh, in the given 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 in the in the near future same could be other other tower infrastructure companies also if uh, the vodafone idea is not able to to repay repay its dues so uh, that uh, has to be uh, carefully analyzed uh, uh, the impairment indicators in case of telecom companies could be frequent change of technology uh, in 5g we have already discussed then uh, there could be um, the moving from copper wire to optical fiber cable if uh, there is any amount attributable to the previous technology that has to be impaired useful life assessment is very very important in case of uh, the ta telecom companies as we shift from uh, the previous technology to the newer technology so uh, this is all uh, from the from the telecom uh, telecom industry perspective which uh, i wanted to cover apart from this uh, uh, the impairment uh, indicators can also be the be the uh, lower arpu or lower return ratio high spectrum cost very frequent regulatory changes which may be adversely affecting the telecom companies currency exposures any um, uh, which uh, the having the adverse effect on the on the company's financial financial uh, process plus uh, there could be other other risk which uh, may not be uh, having direct impact on the on the going concern or the impairment indicators but again very important from our audit perspective like the uncertainty on uh, the regulatory or or political aspect uh, any economic uncertainty may be uh, to the industry or the company in particular poor network infrastructure which could have uh, impact on the average revenue per user which could have uh, the uh, negative impact on the customer base uh data loss prevention uh, privacy of data is very important in this sector and uh, again uh, could have the have the litigation issues or or regulatory uh, impact uh, if uh, this data loss prevention is not there then uh, digitization and innovation is of prime importance in these cases and accordingly uh, have to be considered in all aspect uh, be it recording revenue expense or be it recording any asset and uh, again relative uh, uh, useful life assessment for the amortization perspective uh, so this was all uh, from from this uh, anil ji you are there we can have questions yeah yeah short short so much uh, for a wonderful deliberation so due to the technical glitch uh, we are not able to fetch the questions uh, only one question part question yes, i have received 
that is the sharing of tower lines and procedures and allocation how Correct. to uh, uh, audit while uh, making audit uh, how to make the uh, this sharing of tower lines and its procedures and allocations right sir so uh, sir uh, for the sharing of uh, towers or lease lines or uh, for any aspect of uh, revenue recognition in the telecom uh, companies uh, these telecom companies uses uh, highly technical uh, softwares or complex applications and uh, for uh, ascertaining the exact or correct amount of revenue being recorded or not we need to have an uh, uh, it expert as the part of main audit team who will substantiate the claim of the management that uh, these uh, revenue recognition provisions in case of uh, the sharing of uh, lease lines or maybe tower or maybe other infrastructure is done on a real time basis because uh, all the all the companies uses these softwares and uh, these are being done on on a on a real time basis through these uh, different softwares and applications uh sir uh, one member is asking can you uh, just uh, give a gist because he has joined late uh, what uh, precautions and what considerations we have to do uh, uh, consider in mind while auditing this telecom sector just in a gist yeah yeah so while auditing these telecom companies in particular uh, within the telecom sector there are some inherent risk right uh, the technology become obsolete very quickly uh, we have seen uh, we have very frequently moved from 3g to 5g that there could be substantial cost being incurred for acquisition of customers and uh, may not be recoverable right third very important and very complex is uh, the revenue recognition uh, for that uh, highly recommendable and mandatory uh, to have one uh, uh, technology expert in the audit team apart from that we should be reviewing uh, the set of agreements because every agreement with the customer is very unique and uh, if you have seen last uh, couple of slides uh, wherein uh, i covered the examples so every uh, line or every change in the agreement or the terms will have the different accounting treatment then fourth is the uh, impairment uh, which occurs very uh, or their indicators occur very frequently uh, because of the useful life uh, uh, changing due to the advancement of technology uh, the uh, life of the spectrum uh, because of delay in the setting up of the networking equipment plus uh, there could be a going concern uh, indicator uh, if the contingent liability becomes actually payable in future years uh because in case of telecom companies there are various uh, various uh, uh contingent liabilities uh, uh, which are coming uh, uh, because of the litigations on the spectrum side uh, litigations uh, on the on the increase in the uh, uh, rates of the wavelength uh, frequency microwave rates uh, then there uh, are various other litigations uh, being going on in the telecom companies so these are uh, some of the audit areas which are uh, very particular or very uh, unique in case of telecom industries apart from others yes sir uh, sir uh, we are not in a position to uh, more question one question is fetching uh, popping up so why is that nowadays companies are not offering uh, only uh, incoming plans um i hope only incoming i i got like uh, so just G like the so if i understand correctly it's uh, the question uh, why uh, companies are uh, are give are having the limited uh, uh, validity in case of uh, prepaid right so that is again uh, yes 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 only on uh, incoming plans that is again uh, the, some of the this is more of the regulatory aspect i would say previously uh, the government only uh, did not allowed this but government now have allowed to uh, to have these type of plans so yes, coming from yes, the dot yes. or try uh, nothing from the accounting or or other aspects <clears throat> yes 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 so thank you so much sir nilesh sir uh, for sparing your valuable time and uh, acceding to our request on a very shorter notice 
for this uh, hope our game members have gained a lot through your deliberation as well as various key considerations which you have uh, shared with all our members while auditing the telecom sector so thank you so much once again uh, from uh, the uh, from auditing and assurance standard board for your uh, valuable time sir thank you so much thank sir. You, thank sir thank you so much thank you very much thank you sir thank you thank you